Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Flush now that you've filched all you could out of that wagon train, aren't you, Doc? Not hardly. You can't get blood out of a turnip. You sure did try, though, didn't oh, you? Oh, nonsense. That crowd's been here three, four weeks now, freeloading on Dodge. And you know it. Well, they came clear from Ohio, Doc. I know that. Well, they got to freshen up their supplies somewhere, don't they? Oh, is that what they call it? Uh, you got a real burn, haven't you? Well, no wonder. Uh... I'm tired. I'm tired, man. I'm tired of all this heat, this dust, these nights that are hotter than days. Crying babies they've never seen before and they'll never see again. I'm glad that mob's gone, Max. I'm darn glad of it. Who broke all those glasses? Sam, we got nothing left around here. Hello, Kitty. Oh, you well, feeling it, too? Well, if you're asking me, am I fed up? The answer's yes. Whiskey, Sam. None of that trade whiskey you've been throwing into our recent guests, either. I'll be sitting over here. Kind of got the dock, hasn't it? Yeah, all of us, Kitty. Yeah, the place is pretty empty, isn't it? Well, it sure wasn't two hours ago. The whole town was in here to say goodbye to that crowd. Yeah, I know. Uh, come on, let's step out back. It's too hot in here. Yeah. Maybe Gravy was right starting out at night. At least they'll miss one day of sun. <sighs> Matt, what do you think? Hmm? About what? The chances. Oh... 
Some of them will make it. Some of them won't. It always bothers me to see them. Why? Oh, I don't know. They're so fresh and eager when they hit Dodge. They think they've already been through it. They fought at rivers. They've seen a few blanket Indians. Their kids have had the fever. But they don't know what's waiting for them out there on the high plains. Yeah, that's what's biting Doc, too. They think it's going to be a higher to Kansas all the way. And you can't tell them any different. Get it? Yeah. Look, uh... You and Doc, there's nothing you can do for him. Oh, Matt, I'm sorry. I'm restless. I, I think I'll go back inside. Oh, Kitty. Yeah, Matt. Take good care of Doc, will you? Yeah, I will. Me, Chester. My man, how, how come you ain't in bed? It's awful late. Oh, well, it's too hot. How far'd you follow him? To Moss Grimmick's hay camp. It was kind of a party out there. Oh, uh, there was? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything all right in the wagon train? It seemed to be. Well, I'm going out of bed, Mr. Dillon. Good night. Good night, Chester. What's the matter up there? Uh, come up here, Matt. Somebody's left Doc a baby. They all right, Kitty? Sure, both of them. Asleep. Yeah. The doc was sure feeling his liquor, wasn't he? <laughs> but he still insisted on checking that baby before I could get him to lie down. Yeah. Imagine, Matt. It's a girl. She's awful little. Kitty, uh, how, how much do you know about taking care of a baby, huh? <laughs> Less than you'd think. Well, you know it's going to be your responsibility. Mine? Well, I mean... Until we find the mother. Oh. She must be in that wagon train. Chester and I'll ride after him tonight. We can catch him by morning. Yeah, you better. Wait till Doc wakes up and finds that baby in his room. He'll never take another drink. <laughs> They sure are laying down a dust trail, ain't they, Mr. Dillon? Our uh, gravy said he was going to keep pushing till the sun got overhead. It ain't but seven or so now, and it's uncommon hot. Yes, sir. Howdy. Morning, ma'am. Hello, John. Uh, Mr. Dillon, there's Mr. Gravy way up ahead there. Yeah, I see him. Come on. Hey, Gravy! Mr. Greedy! Hey! Marshal Dillon! Yeah! What 
brings you way out here. I want to talk to your people, Greavy. Can you hold them up a little while? Hold them up? You mean stop the train? Well, that's important, or I wouldn't ask. It's real important. Well, yeah, all right. Hold it up, boys! Hold it! Hold it! Chester, go back down the line and tell everybody I want them to meet at the center of the wagon train, huh? All right, sir. Hey, what's this all about, Marshal? You gotta bear with me, Greavy. I gotta do this. Come on, I want you to. All right, folks. Settle down. Folks, please. You all know Marshal Dillon. Now, he won't tell me what this is all about. But he says he wants to make a speech. Well, uh, Mr. Greavy's wrong about that. The speeches were made last night. Now, Dodge was glad to have you folks, and we all wish you well. But what I've got to say is only for one person, or maybe two. I'm talking to the woman who left her newborn baby at Doc Adams last night. Now, all I can say to you is that you better think on it, whoever you are, because California's a long way from Kansas. It's too long if you start to regret it too late. Now, I'm not interested in bringing charges against anybody. So why don't you think it over before it is too late, huh? Thank you. Well, that's all, Greavy. Thanks very much. Come on, Chester. the wagon train today, man. Well, I told him. That's all. So long. No, no, no. I'm going out to Long Branch for a minute. Now, you know that stuff's habit forming, don't you? For your information, I need sheets. Torn bed sheets. Oh. That. Yeah. That. You know, she's not going to show up, man. Well, what makes you think so? Any woman who'd abandon her baby isn't going to be swayed by your brand of sentimentalism. Well, maybe not, Doc, but I'm going to be here just in case. All right. Suit yourself. Uh, Chester, what are you doing down here? Oh, now, don't worry, Doc. I'm going right back, but I just remembered something I ought to tell Mr. Dillon. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Did you just remember to tell me something, Chester? Oh, yes, sir, I did. Uh, see, there was a fellow come by here, and he, he said he was a soldier. Oh? Uh -huh. Yes, sir, it seems he just got his discharge. Well, what did he want? Well, he was asking about the wagon train. See, he thinks maybe his wife was with it. His wife? Yes, sir, he was supposed to meet her farther out at Cimarron Crossing, but he got to Dodge sooner than what he expected. Well, what did you tell him? I told him they was long gone, but he could catch up with them easy, and so he rode off. Well, I guess ain't too important, but I feel bad I didn't tell you before. See, what was that new baby and all my nerves? Is, well, Mr. Dillon, I better get back up there for something happened. <laughs> all right, Chester, go ahead. you do with Doc? Very little. He got his sheets, but he'd hardly speak to Sam. Well, maybe he's blaming Sam for what happened. Well, Doc's got quite a homey problem with that baby. Yeah, I know. What are you going to do, Matt? Oh, well, let nature take its course, I guess. Well, you always were an optimist. Well, in my business, I have to be. Say, uh, 
Kitty, mm. could you get me something to eat? Sure, ma'am. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? She's here, Mr. Dillon. Huh? That little baby's mama is waiting for you over at the office. Chester, go tell Doc to come down to the office. You stay with the baby, huh? All right, sir. Oh, uh, this here is Marshal Dillon, ma'am. I'm, uh, I'm Mrs. Bailey. Uh, you were with the wagon train, weren't you, Miss Bailey? Y- yes, I... I've come for my baby. Uh-huh. Oh, where's your husband? Didn't he come with you? Well, Marshal, my... My husband's been away in the army for two years. Oh, I, I see. That's why I I left my baby. Uh, yes, Matt. Uh, this is Doctor Adams, Miss Bailey. Oh, well. Oh, uh, Matt, can I have a word with you? Well, right now, Doc. Uh, right now. Marshal, I'm Clint Bailey. I rode all the way out to that wagon trip. Jenny. Clint. Oh, hello, Clint. Good to see you. Marshal, uh, uh, this is my husband. Uh, but well, what are you doing here? You now, something wrong? Jenny, what is it? Marshal... You tell him. Oh, uh, Mr. Bailey, you, your wife came for her baby. Came for... for her baby? What do you... Jenny, she could have left it, but she didn't. Is it true, Jenny? Well, is it? Yes. But, Jenny, we never had kids... All the years we've been married... I know, we never... Clint, it wasn't for me not wanting them. Well, what is this baby? It's a girl. A girl. Well, that's good. That part's good. Can we keep her, Clint? I've been waiting two years... To come back to you, Jenny. And I can't lose you now. Say, Doc, are you you sleeping? No, no. No, Matt, I... I was just thinking. No, good for you. You know, it's a thing uh, like that tonight that gives you all the hope you need to keep going. You'd have been better off sleeping, Doc. It wasn't her baby, you know. What? What are you talking about? Uh, She came to me three weeks ago. I told her then that she could never have a baby. Never. Well, why did she lie to her husband? Because of you. She was afraid you wouldn't let her take it. But then I, I'm sure she's told him the truth by now. Well, Doc, you should have told me it. This isn't right. What if a real mother shows up? Do you think she will? No. No, Doc. I, I don't. Can I buy you a drink, man? Just one, of course. Just one? (laughs) I think that'd be fine. Now 
William Conrad. Four weeks ago, we asked you to let us know which gun smoke stories you would like to hear again. And your letters and cards have enabled us to select the five most popular. But uh, more important, however, to those of us here on the show were the wonderful expressions of warmth and interest. We're deeply grateful. Well, next week, the first of the five most popular shows. It's one we have called simply Home Surgery. and directed by Norman MacDonald. Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.